while growing up, uh, there were its elements of having an ordinary life, uh, but there were also, you know, different things which uh, not every child would experience. John Alexander Tristram grew up in a home where he felt no real affection or bonding. The relationship I had with my dad was a little different in a sense that uh, I was born when he was 63 or 64. And uh, so while growing up, he was quite old. I remember the day when he passed away. I seen him literally die right in front of my eyes. And it was as difficult as it was. I didn't feel any emotional, you know, the kind of other people would have felt. Even my mother, she had her phases of life where she was not keeping too well. They tried their best, I would say, to be you know, normal parents, but due to all these circumstances, uh, we had a quite a distant relationship with each other. So John spent most of his time with his friends, and one day, that landed him to the most unlikely of places. My friend said there's this, one of this uncle, uh, and he's a very nice uncle. And when we went there, there was this man, quite elderly man. I think he should have been 60s. Gray hair and a little dingy type of a house. And he was very sweet, very nice. Then he said, come sit down. He gave us jam and bread and some other things to eat. And then he said, uh, you know, these are magazines. You know, why don't you look through them? And we would see a lot of naked people in those magazines. And I think that's where the abuse started. It was not a very good thing. We were, me and my friend, I mean, later when we came out, we just didn't speak about it. This whole episode left little John confused and helpless. I felt very disgusted. And there was fear which was running in, in my heart at that time. And I think we, uh, another thing is we didn't know what to say, what to do. As he grew, John tried to forget this incident but it had already unlocked a deep sexual curiosity in him. Pornography became a very strong hold in our lives. We got into pornography, masturbation, all these different kind of things, which was, uh, I would say that we grew more uh, sexually with more knowledge in terms of what is this, what is that. And John's addictions took him further away from his studies and normal life. After 10th, I actually had to start uh, working and during that time I got introduced to pubs going and you know getting really drunk then coming back home and so then I would buy alcohol and keep it in my house in different places. With a steady job to fuel his lifestyle John was on a continual high but suddenly he fell very ill. Uh, but there was uh, one day I start you know I got sick you know the headache the cough the cold and all those things were happening and I turned on the TV and then you see on the all news challenge the uh, swine flu you know outbreak had taken place and when I seen that and when I looked at my condition because they kept putting all the you know if you have this this and this that means you have the swine flu so now I was really terrified now advised by a friend John attended a Christian meeting in hope that he will be healed. My heart was thinking, you know, God, if you're there, show yourself, you know, I really need some, you know, I was just trying to, in myself, without saying it out in my heart, I was trying to say, God, if you're there, help me, give me life. I kept saying these things to myself. And I'll tell you, at that point of time, something just, you know, I could really feel, you know, a very powerful presence of God just come upon me, you know, it was, so powerful that uh, I started seeing my whole life just flash, like how you'd see, you know, like if you had to see a TV screen and things going, and I, I just began to cry. I was like, you know, God, you know, I was just feeling so horrible, so disgusted for my life. I, I didn't know, there were no words even to explain. And, uh, but then I, as I was saying these words, I was also telling God, you know, please let me live. At that moment, John knew that he was healed, both in his body and his spirit. Suddenly, I, you know, I just felt a kind of uh, peace come into my heart. Then I, you know, I said, you know, ask God to forgive me for the kind of things I was. I asked, you know, Jesus Christ to come into my life. With the deep connection he found in Jesus, John felt his earlier desires replaced by the desire to serve him. And God has suddenly 
my heart has been open to serve him and he has directed me into places where I can help other people. I get to do things which I really love now. I teach in a school for underprivileged children. I share the good news of Jesus Christ with people. I mean, I feel so happy that I'm doing the things which make me more and more happy. Even today, John says his life is no ordinary one, but one that is blessed and restored by Jesus. All mark of everything is I feel a complete security in Christ. I think that's the best thing which I love, that I feel secure in Christ. Uh, I feel that, you know, a true feeling in my heart that I am accepted by God. The fact that He came into my life, He transformed my life, He is my everything. He is like my Father, He is my Savior, He is everything. Uh, if you take Jesus out of my life, I am as good as dead.